Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about centrally acting muscle relaxants. Muscle spasticity is one of the condition where there is an increased repetitive muscle movements along with increased muscle pain and involuntary movements and sometimes it may also be associated with the immobility. All these symptoms are associated with the muscle spasticity and this condition can be observed with few other disorders like the multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is one of a neurodegenerative disorder which mainly affects the skeletal muscle resulting in the muscle spasticity and sometimes muscle spasticity can also be observed with the spinal cord injuries and these spastic conditions are associated with the increased muscle pain as well as muscle spasm. In such conditions we can use the centrally acting muscle relaxants. We can also use the peripherally acting muscle relaxants like the dantrolene, neuromuscular blockers directly blocking the nicotinic receptors like the saxamethonium, pancuronium. All these can produce some skeletal muscle relaxation but today in this video we are going to discuss the centrally acting muscle relaxants which are mainly indicated for the spastic conditions as well as spinal cord injuries. What are the centrally acting muscle relaxants? We have three important centrally acting muscle relaxants. The first one is the GABA B agonis. One of the drug is the baclofen. And second one is the alpha 2 agonis. One of the drug is the tizanidine. And this drug is having the suffix like nidine, which resembles the other drug clonidine. Clonidine is an alpha 2 agonist as well as tizanidine is also an alpha 2 agonist. But here this tizanidine is used as skeletal muscle relaxant. Third one is a benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines produce an anxiolytic, sedative and hypnotic effect. And apart from these, they can also produce some anticonvulsant and muscle relaxant activities. So one of the benzodiazepines is a digipalm that can be used as skeletal muscle relaxant. Other drugs include chlorzoxazone and other related drugs which are mainly used as adjuvants to produce the muscle relaxation. So now let us see how these skeletal muscle relaxants are working. All these drugs are centrally acting that's why they produce uh, some central depression resulting in the drowsiness and dizziness in the patients. So now let us see how these centrally acting muscle relaxants are going to act. Within the central nervous system, the motor neuron is going to control the skeletal muscle activity and this motor neuron is equipped with the AMPA receptors. AMPA receptors are the receptors for glutamate which are the inotropic receptors and they are fast acting and whenever the glutamate acts on these AMPA receptors, motor neurons are rapidly activated to send the signals to the skeletal muscle. Now these motor neurons are going to be supplied with the presynaptic neurons where the glutamate is going to be stored and released which acts on the AMP receptors on the motor neuron to produce the skeletal muscle contraction. So when the impulse are going to reach to the corticotropic neurons, they are going to release one of the important mediator glutamate which binds to the AMP receptors and when these AMP receptors are activated, they are inotropic receptors. So they are going to allow few of the ions like the sodium. Now this sodium produces the depolation of the motor neuron and this depolation is transmitted through the motor neuron to the skeletal muscle such that skeletal muscle is undergoing the contraction. In this way, glutamate plays an important role in skeletal muscle contraction. But this signaling is going to be controlled by other inhibitory neurotransmitters within the CNS. So within the presynaptic neuron, we can observe one of the receptor alpha 2 receptors and similarly another one is the GABA B receptors. Both are G protein coupled receptors which are controlling the glutamate release and similarly on the motor neuron we can observe again the GABA B receptors and we can also observe inotropic GABA A receptors. So here glutamate acts as the excitatory amino acid which produces the motor activation but at the same time the inhibitory neurons can release one of the important mediator that is the GABA. GABA is a inhibitory amino acid neurotransmitter. This GABA can bind to the GABA B receptors which are expressed presynaptically such that these receptors are going to inhibit the release of glutamate so that glutamate is not released. Norepinephrine can act on the alpha 2 receptors. Again, they inhibit the release of glutamate. Thereby, they inhibit the glutaminergic transmission. In this way, the glutamate release is controlled presynaptically by alpha 2 receptors as well as GABA B receptors. And here, the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA can also act on the motor neurons 
so it can bind to the GABA B receptors which produce a slow modulatory response. Otherwise, it can bind to the GABA A receptors where it is going to produce an inhibited response by opening of chloride channels. Because of these two actions, GABA can produce an inhibited response on the motor neuron so that it can prevent the skeletal muscle contraction. In this way, the motor activity can be controlled by mainly alpha-2 receptors, GABA B receptors and GABA A receptors. Now let us see what are the drug targets for the centrally acting muscle relaxants. One of the drug target is the tizanidine, which is going to act as an agonist on the alpha-2 receptors which are located presynaptically and they inhibit the release of the glutamate. Similarly, another drug target is a baclofen, which is going to activate the GABA B receptors located on presynaptic as well as postsynaptically, such that it is going to inhibit the motor response. Similarly, the benzodiazepines are going to bind to the benzodiazepine binding site on the GABA A, thereby they increase the binding of GABA to the GABA A receptors, resulting in the opening of chloride channels and hyperpolarization of the motor neurons. So, benzodiazepines can also inhibit the motor response by binding to the GABA A receptors. In this way, these three drugs can produce the muscle relaxation by increasing the inhibitory response on the presynaptic as well as postsynaptic motor neurons. So first drug is the baclofen. Baclofen is having the structure like this and you can observe it is having the structure just similar to the GABA. Here it is having the carboxylic acid and we can start the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4. So fourth position it is having an amino group. So this is a 4 amino butanoic acid. So 4 amino butanoic acid is nothing but the gamma amino butyric acid. So it is a GABA derivative but it is having a substitution at the third position. So which is nothing but the para chlorophenyl. So third position we can observe 4 chlorophenyl ring is present. So baclofen is a modified structure of the GABA with para chlorophenyl substitution at the third position. Now this baclofen mainly acts as an agonist at the GABA B receptors which are the G protein coupled receptors which produce the inhibitory response on the motor activity. That's why this baclofen can be used to treat the spastic conditions as well as to control the muscle pain in the spinal cord injuries. And since this drug is going to act centrally, it produces we have the central side effects like the drowsiness, dizziness and weakness. So whenever this drug is given, the drowsiness is one of the important side effects that can be observed in most of the patients. And whenever this drug is withdrawn suddenly, so it shows few of the withdrawal effects. Particularly, it can produce few of the psychotic symptoms like hallucinations. And it can also stimulate the reflex mechanisms and the sympathetic system such that it can produce a tachycardia, agitation in the patients. So the drug should not be stopped suddenly in order to prevent these withdrawal effects. Second drug is the tizanidine. Tizanidine is having the structure like this. And here you can observe one of the heterocyclic ring system with two nitrogens and one sulfur. So we can start the numbering here. One, two, three, four, five and so on. So now this heterocyclic ring system is having the sulfur at second position and nitrogens at first and third position. So we can write this as 213-benzothiadiazole. So 213-benzothiadiazole is attached with an amine group at the fourth position. So 4 amine. So that is the ring system present in this uh, tizanidine and fifth position we can observe a chloro group and it is having another heterocyclic ring system on the MN group at the fourth position. Let us give the numbering to this uh, heterocyclic ring. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is simply imidazole which is saturated fourth and fifth position. So we can write this as N-4,5-dihydroimidazole-2-ile. So that is a complete name of the tizanidine. Just we have seen the mechanism of this drug. This drug is going to bind to the alpha-2 receptors which are located presynaptically. Thereby it inhibits the release of the excited neurotransmitters like the glutamate. Thereby it inhibits the motor activation. So again this drug is central acting. So it produces we have the central depressant effects like sedation, hypotension, dizziness. And it can also produce we have the other side effects like dry mouth and constipation. So this drug is a alpha-2 agonist. And related with the other drug like clonidine, clonidine is a centrally acting antihypertensive, but tizanidine is a centrally acting muscle relaxant. Again, this drug produces a hypotension under normal conditions, but when this drug is suddenly stopped, it can produce a, a rebound hypertension and tachycardia. 
So again, this drug should not be stopped suddenly. Third one is a digipom. Digipom is a benzodiazepine having the structure like this. And digipom binds to the benzodiazepine binding site. Thereby it facilitates the action of the GABA on the GABA A receptors. So this drug is a positive allosteric modulator for the GABA A receptors. This drug is particularly used as anxiolytic and anticonvulsant. And apart from these two indications, digipom can also be used to produce the muscle relaxation. And since it's a benzodiazepine, again it produces a sedation, dizziness, drowsiness, and it can also produce some loss of memory resulting in the amnesia. So these are the common side effects of digipom. Drugs to treat the muscle spasm. So till now we have seen the three drugs which are mainly used for the spastic conditions. But we have few of the other drugs which are centrally acting to control the muscle spasm and they are mainly used as muscle relaxants. We have few of the drugs like the chlorzoxazone, carciprodol, methocarbamol, cyclobenzaprine, orphanadrine and metaxolone. All these are the central acting muscle relaxants which are mainly used to control the pain during the spastic conditions. So even these drugs are not completely relieving the spastic conditions. They can reduce the pain and the spasm. That's why these drugs can be used as adjuvants in the treatment of spastic conditions. And these drugs are intended for a short term use in order to reduce the pain and spasm. Among this chlorzoxone is one of the drugs which is widely used. So this is a chlorzoxone structure. So simply it is a benzoxazole with a ketone. So benzoxazolone is the ring system present in the chlorzoxazone. And this drug and this drug mainly acts on the spinal cords, thereby it inhibits the multisynaptic reflexes, resulting in the relieving of the muscle spasm. Again, this drug produces few of the central side effects like dizziness and drowsiness in the patients. But these drugs are not the main line of drugs. They are mainly used as adjuvants to control the pain as well as spasm in the musculoskeletal disorders. So that's about the centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxants. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.